Hi, it's Dougie Wood, and in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about SharePoint versus OneDrive, and are they the same thing? So let's jump in and take a look. The short answer is that SharePoint and OneDrive use a very similar functionality in terms of the usability of how you upload, download, edit, and share documents. However, they are completely two separate products that are used for two completely separate purposes. So the first thing we're going to talk about is SharePoint. And what is SharePoint? Now, SharePoint has two main focuses. It provides a centralized place where you can share documents with your wider organization. Um, but it also provides a platform as an intranet. So let's take a look at that. Now, from office.com, we can get to SharePoint by searching for the app SharePoint across the top bar. And then this will take us to the SharePoint search page. Now, a lot of people confuse this with being the home page of the SharePoint intranet. It's not. It's a searching page. You can see here across the top now, it's saying that I can search all of SharePoint. And I can see all the different SharePoint sites that I frequently access. On the left-hand side, I can see all the following sites. So this is kind of like a bookmarking area of SharePoint sites I've previously bookmarked. I can see any recent sites. And for example, typically the kind of home page your internet might be called, for example, the hub, as Microsoft know the kind of top of this kind of architecture as a hub site, which often contains other sub areas underneath it, like department sites. For example, you might have a marketing site, an IT site, a human resources site, or a finance site. Now, these are all intranet sites. Now, the sole purpose of this is to provide a centralized platform where typically all of the members of your organization would have read-only access, and then specific people would have editorial access to those different SharePoint sites. So this is a typical kind of intranet homepage, which has two main purposes. One is about navigation, so it's helping people find things, whether it's department information or apps. We can also see that it also has uh, communication. So it has things like news um, scrollers, uh, call to action buttons linking you to policies, materials, forms, um, news rollups from other areas of the internet, events that are coming up, Twitter feeds, uh, recent videos, charts, and things like that. So it's got two main focuses. One about navigation, so you can see there's multiple places of navigation across the top, the site navigation, or even quick links. And then communication through latest news articles, events, charts, and other types of information which is coming through. It's also worth mentioning that SharePoint is also the back end to Microsoft Teams. So every Microsoft team that you have will also create a SharePoint team site in the background. Now, if you're not too sure about the different types of SharePoint sites, we've got hub sites, communication sites, and team sites. I do also have a, a, a video which explains separately these different types of sites and when to use them. So go check that out. So that was SharePoint. Again, SharePoint is a centralized platform for sharing information with the wider organization. Now, the next product to talk about then is OneDrive. Now, OneDrive is your own personal document storage space. It's for storing things that um, you're not necessarily sharing out with your other team members. Now, you can share things out, but typically it's just for your own kind of storage area. So again, to get to OneDrive, all we need to do is use the search bar across the top and we can just search for OneDrive. And this is gonna then jump us into our own OneDrive space. Now you can see, if you've already started using SharePoint um, as a kind of document storage area, then OneDrive is very similar in terms of the way you can create new folders, new files, we can upload things, and also we can sync a OneDrive. Now this is also the other confusing part that people get confused between SharePoint and OneDrive, is actually that we can use this sync button from either OneDrive or in SharePoint, and then it will appear inside of our file explorer to show us what documents that we've got synced. Now the product on your, or the application on your computer, which will show up with a little blue cloud across the bottom right hand corner of your computer, is called OneDrive. Although it does the sync for both OneDrive, SharePoint, and Teams, the application itself is called OneDrive. So that's where a little bit of confusion can come into place. But just as a recapper, we can sync both OneDrive, this personal area, we can sync our SharePoint, a shared area, and we can sync our Teams, a collaborational space, um, to our file explorer on our computer using the OneDrive application. 
Now, the OneDrive in the browser is really useful as well, not only for storing your own personal documents, but also seeing where documents you recently accessed. So this will actually show up documents from anywhere, not just OneDrive, but also some of the other areas that I've been accessing. So for example, this Project X is a Microsoft team, my sales team, or my marketing SharePoint site. I can access those documents from there as well. So it's a personalized way of navigating to documents that I'm working on. The other really cool feature I like is this shared button. Now this is um, a really great feature because not only can you see what documents have been shared with you, so at the moment I've got, unfortunately, I've got no document shared with me in my demo area, but let's say for example, if one of my team members had shared a document with me, they might call me up and say, hey Dougie, have you seen that document that I shared with you yesterday? And it, I don't know where they've shared it with me. It might They might have shared it via Teams. They might have sent it via an email. Um, and I've just missed that notification. So I can say, oh, no, I've not seen that. But I can go into my OneDrive area, go with the Shared With You tab, and that will show me everything that's been shared specifically with me. Now, the other great feature that I really like about this OneDrive page is I can also see Shared By You, which basically means anything I have shared out to other people. So this, for example, I can see this customer feedback log has been shared uh, out. So say, for example, if I thought, oh, hang on, well, this is a document that lives in my personal OneDrive and no one else should be seeing this, I could then go into here and I could choose to revoke the access and redraw that backwards. So it's a great place of just keeping track of where documents have actually been shared out to uh, other people. I can also see I've got a recycling bin in here. Now, this is if I was to delete a document, so let's say, for example, if I go into my files area, I'm going to delete my customer feedback document. I'm just say, yes, I want to delete that. That will then appear inside of my recycle bin. Now, that will stay inside of my recycle bin um, roughly, let's say, for about 30 days or so. Then it will automatically be deleted and it will put it into what they call the second stage recycle bin. So that will then go into here. Now again, I've got roughly another 30 days to get that back before it's then automatically deleted again. Now, so that's roughly about 60 days from the point of deletion for me to get it back. So it's plenty of time for me to notice that the document is gone and then for me to go and restore it back from this recycle bin. Now, if it's gone after that period of time and it's not in the first stage recycle bin or the second stage recycle bin, then that's when um, I would need to reach out to my say IT department to ask to, for them to restore it from a backup and hopefully your organization is already using third-party backup tools to be able to restore that document if it's no longer in the recycle bin. So that's just a little quick uh, whistle-stop tour of OneDrive. Now, just to explain the differences then, so SharePoint is your collaborational space. It's the space which is a platform where you're publishing documents that everybody should be able to access um, to read and download. And the documents that don't necessarily get updated all that frequently. Um, that it's a publishing platform. It might be where you're submitting uh, sort of where you can get your expense request forms from or marketing branded materials and things like that. And then OneDrive is your own personal document storage space. So that's somewhere where you are working on documents and their drafts and they're not really um, cluttering up a collaborational space like a SharePoint site or a Microsoft team. Now, we do recommend that people make the most out of using their OneDrive because everybody gets up to a terabyte of storage space within their OneDrive. And to put that into comparison, let's say, for example, you're in a 200 user um, organization um, and your company's got 200 employees. Um, now, the way that SharePoint and Microsoft Teams uh, works, that the storage space for every single SharePoint site and every single team combined together um, is actually calculated based on the amount of users you've got. So let's say, for example, roughly 200 employees might give you, say, two terabytes worth of storage space um, for every single SharePoint site and every single Microsoft team combined. However, say, for example, that's 200 terabytes of OneDrive storage space that's floating around in the ether there that you can use. An often question that I get asked is, well, can we use that OneDrive storage space and plug it into our SharePoint or our Teams. No, unfortunately, it is only for that specific user to use, but do make the most out of it. Create internal policies and procedures to get the most out of OneDrive. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe to the channel for future Microsoft 365 top tips.